Tangerine, Tony, from that uh, conversation we were having. I've got you. <laughs> Guacamole! That's Guacamole with an exclamation mark. So you have Guacamole! To it, you have to say it exactly. very excitedly. I just so, love saying the word Guacamole. Yeah, this game is great. It is absolutely fantastic. I love the theme, the setting, the gameplay. Yeah. Really fun. Um, I think the, the problem for me for Guacamole this year was I played it like two months after playing Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is just the best Metroidvania game of all time, maybe. Yeah. And this is a yeah. like, very good Metroidvania game. So I was like, I was like comparing it to that, which I think was not good for the game. I mean, it has its flaws, but I think overall it's a really, really fun um, Metroidvania game. Definitely, definitely yeah. worth checking out. One of the first things that confused me about Guacamole is there's like three different editions of the game, which I was so fucking confused about. Yeah. So there's like Guacamole, there's Guacamole Gold, and then there's Guacamole Super Turbo Championship Edition. And I was like, which version am I supposed to be fucking playing? Because I think originally I tried to play this uh, like years ago and I tried Guacamole Gold. And then I was like, oh, I don't like... I don't like some of like the combat and stuff. I think I was playing it with mouse and keyboard, maybe even. Oh right. Um, but then when I played it again, I learned that there was the Super Turbo Ship Edition, um, which actually I think improved some of the B powers. Uh, it added new levels. It added like refinements to the combat and the platforming and that sort of stuff. So they actually. They changed it. Whether you think it's for the better, that's up to you. But I, I think I much enjoy, enjoyed the changes they made um, mm -hmm. based on the limited time I played it like all those years ago. Um, but the main concept of Guacamole is you're Juan and... Juan! Your girl... Well, she's not your girl... But your, your love interest gets captured by a like Day of the Dead style ancient... Um, like skeleton man and then um, I believe he just straight up kills you and then you come back from the land of the dead as a uh, luchador what are you doing to the chickens? I don't know, I'm punching the shit there's, <laughs> there's lots of side quests that involve like moving chickens around uh, right there's a lot Chicken, of chickens Chick uh, El Polios are a big theme in this game um, right um, El Gato, the runner. I mean, speaking of Metroidvania, there's different abilities that let you interact with the worlds in different ways. At, at one point, you have to become a chicken. You get trapped as a chicken, and, it, and you have, you get to fight as a chicken, and it makes you really fucking weak. And you have to, like, pack enemies. Um, that sounds really cool. Yeah. And obviously, it has that, like, Metroidvania thing where you get, like, you get the ability to dash up, you get the ability to destroy certain blocks, you get the ability to like fly across the screen, like and it's all like areas you've been to before, they get unlocked now because you now have the ability to maneuver around them. And I think that's what's great in these platforming, you know, Metroidvania mm. games is when an area becomes almost a new area based on the abilities you have, and the map yeah. evolves as you do in a way. Which I think is like a defining factor. Um yeah. The game itself. What I think Guacamelee excels at is it is a great, like, Mexican wrestling game. Yeah, it's, it just fucking kills oh, you immediately. What the hell? Um, I guess I could play guitar. But that becomes a big mechanic in the game uh, because there's the spirit world where you have, like, the dead people, and then there's the alive world. And every single area on the map has a spirit world version of it. And sometimes you'll need to do something in the spirit world that affects the alive world, or there'll be entire quests that exist in the spirit world. Right. Which makes the game really, really interesting. Um, another thing is... I love the combat in this game. You know, like, in Spider-Man, you really feel like Spider-Man? In this yeah. game, you really feel like a Mexican wrestler. All of the moves are designed in a way so you have to like combo them and you like toss people across as if you're tossing them like across a ring. Um, I think like the combat and the combat designs like a huge strength of Guacamelee. 
Um, what you do is you kill enemies and you collect these coins, and then when you get these coins, you can use it to buy upgrades. So you can like upgrade your health, um, you can upgrade your uh, stamina bar, you can upgrade, um, you can buy new combo abilities. Tony, so I played through this whole game, right, Tony? And yeah. I bought all the upgrades, and then I fought the final boss, and I was like, fuck me, the final boss is really hard. I decided I was going to keep playing for a bit and try and unlock some of the bonus collectibles, right? Yeah. I go to the shop, I realize there's a second page of upgrades, and I haven't... <laughs> I've beat the final boss of the game with only half the upgrades in the game. And I'm like, right. no matter... Now that's the fucking reason I had so many fucking, um... That's the reason I had so many freaking so much freaking money. It's because I couldn't spend any because I didn't buy half of them in the game. So yeah, you see like this guy's in darkness now. Um, yeah. That will happen a lot in the game where he's actually in the spirit realm. So you have to shift in the spirit realm in order to be able to attack him. Um, in this point of the game, you won't be able to shift between realms freely. Um, but that will come later on as you get more abilities. The way you get right. abilities is there's a goat man... And you go around destroying goat statues, and then he teaches you the ability to um, use these new um, moves. He never seems happy about you going around destroying these goat statues, but um, <laughs> he always gives you this new ability anyway. So right. Um, what's the stuff earlier where it's like like there's like players at the top? Yeah, they're like they. Um, yeah, Just... so I think these are fully playable local cops. You can have more than one person playing. Right, okay. You can have, I believe, because there's a pl there was a player too that talks to you in cutscenes, but if you're only playing single player, you never really interact with her otherwise. She, she would normally be like by your side sort of thing. Right, um, okay. If, you, if you're playing with the... Uh, there's an optional... It, it's sort of like a brawler game, so there's that option... In, like, the old Brawler games, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games, you would always have the option for, like, four-player co-op sort of thing. Yeah. And I think that's one of the features added in, like, the Gold Edition or this edition is the co-op feature. Okay. Um, I never tried out the co-op feature because I think it's only single, like, um, it's only local co-op, so there's no online co-op version. Um, but the game is... It's a sent. It's essentially a single player game with the the multiplayer, like the co-op tacked on sort of thing. I believe that's right, how it was designed. So okay. not something you need to to use in order to enjoy the game. You're not, you're not missing too much. No. Okay. Um, but essentially, the game boils down to you go around, you do quests for people, you upgrade your character, you get new abilities to allow you to get around the map further, and you need to defeat these bosses. Um, that are like the henchmen of the big boss who stole your love interest, pretty much. Um, and yeah, that's Guacamelee. It's fairly simple. There's new costumes you can get which give you different abilities, which is cool. Mm. Yeah. Um, which you find like these optional silver coins which give you different... I As soon as I found <laughs> out you could be a chicken, I was a chicken the entire game. <laughs> okay. Some of those costumes are pretty cool. Yeah, I think Guacamele, when it boils down to it, is a pretty simple Metroidvania game, but it, it, it does it so well that it's genuinely just really fun to play all around. I'd okay. highly recommend Guacamele to anyone, really. And I thought I owned Guacamele too, um, and I looked and I didn't, and I was like, well, this sale, I'm picking up Guacamele too, and I'm going to play Guacamele too now, because I'm so impressed by the first game, I've got to play the next one. Coming to a tangerine soon. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah, check out Racket Manly, really cool. And then another game I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I don't want to talk about this game for a while. Now, I think Racket Manly is an immediate recommend, but this one is so interesting because it is almost a good game, but it just falters in so many key areas that I just can't fully recommend it to anyone. I really wanted to like this game, and this game does so many things well. Um, the actual sailing mechanics and building your boat in this game is so much fun. 
Um, it's such a great like ocean um, like wave simulator. It's such like a the game looks gorgeous. It's so relaxing and stuff like that. Um, I think the biggest problem with this game is the core gameplay of the game is the combat sucks. Um, That's right. That's yeah. Fortunate. What is going on? Giant this is how squid. the game starts out. You just—it's just a dream, Tony. It's just a dream. It's the whole game. Um, because I believe they added, they made like a DLC for the game, but it's just part of the base game now. It's not an option. They just put it into right. the game, which added like a lot more challenge to the game. Because it starts off like very simplistic, um, right. which I like. So. It starts off where the core game pain mechanic is. You build a boat, you go around, and you have to find these three beacons which allow you to progress to the next chapter. So you're, essentially you're just sailing around exploring. This is where the game excels. The actual sailing around, the exploration, the light crafting survival mechanics. This stuff's really, really fun. Where the game falters is... The game then starts at the end of every chapter, you have to fight a boss. Oh, okay. And the combat in the game is not good. So in order to actually attack enemies, you need to lock on to them. But to lock on to them, it makes the combat really clunky and hard to use. It's hard to explain, but trust me when I say the combat is not well designed. And another thing about the game is... Even on the easiest difficulty and like the normal mode, it's set up in a way where um, if you die when you're playing a chapter, you have to reset the entire chapter again. Um, so it's set up with like these soft roguelite mechanics in every chapter that can't be turned off. Because I believe originally the base game was just if you died in a chapter, you had to start the entire game again. Wait, what? <laughs> but now that's been moved to the hard mode, and the easier right. mode is now you just reset the chapter. That's still quite brutal, though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is pretty... Br especially when you get to, like, the newer enemies they made, like, the corrupted enemies, um, because they're really hard to fight. They're constantly surrounded in these corrupted areas, which deals damage to you. Um, and then... They also deal what's called, like, corrupted damage to you, so they deal, like, permanent damage to your health, but you can't heal back with food unless you cleanse it. Right. So, like, a lot of the combat is not only gated by hard combat, but it's also gated by you going around gathering resources to make sure you have, like, all of these resources you need in order to actually combat a lot of the really tough enemies that you're going to have to face to progress. Um, and then it feels really bad because you die and then you have to do the entire thing again. You have to start the entire chapter again and you have to go around regathering all these resources. And these resources are usually quite abundant. You'll need specific resources to like upgrade your boat or build things that you need. And um, they will respawn when you die, but they will be on certain islands and then after you get it from that certain island it will be c completely g gone um, until you move on sort of thing but this is like how the combat works in this game you're sort of trying to stab people it wants you to kind of lock on to people but locking on to people makes it a lot harder to actually hit them <laughs> right um, okay. but without locking on to people you can't dodge oh it's not like it's a free yeah. form Okay. But see, you see here, like, I'm stood right next to this guy, but I can't really attack him until I lock onto him. And I can't really dodge until I lock onto him. Right, okay. So we should... <sighs> right, well... Why does... I don't know... Why does it give you, like, free control? That doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. I found that... Going through the chapters and just playing them on... Re like, the later chapters, I found I was playing them on repeat. I thought about quitting the game several times just because of how much I hated the combat. Like, I really loved the um, 
I really love the, the mechanics of just riding around on your boat, going from island to island. You just different islands the, for, for the exploration things. was great. Just the actual okay. sailing mechanics are so good. Um but like the com the forced combat, the forced resetting, the forced boss fights at the end of every chapter made it really unenjoyable for me to a point where I almost quit the game. I think it wasn't until I like just brute force kept crafting and I found like these potions that made you just ridiculously strong and I was actually able to uh, okay. cra just keep crafting a bunch of these potions which <laughs> let you yeah. eventually let me beat like some of the tough bosses. To bypass um, the, uh, the bad combat. But yeah. Well, I'm going to bypass, but... I felt like... I felt like cause some games are hard and they force you to use mechanics to get around them. Yeah. But I felt like, if anything, it wasn't worth it. And I felt like I was almost cheesing with these fucking potions sometimes. It just what didn't feel rewarding. I didn't like it. I completed the game. But honestly, I would have been okay if I just stopped playing. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you, I mean, so, you, so you're kind of like, it's like good, some good mechanics, but not like the overall game. Yeah, you collect these shard essences and at the end of every chapter, it lets you unlock a new ability to help you through it. Um, and then you get to um, spend these sea cell shards to unlock more slots as well, but it's still gated off between fighting these bosses behind the chapters. So you can make like a build sort, sort of, but not really. Like it feels like the game excels when it's a sailing simulator, but like the combat, the leveling up mechanics, the roguelike elements. These just feel like half baked, undercooked. Like they don't feel good at all. Okay. Um, but I think because after I finished playing the game, there is like just an endless sailing mode. And I gotta say, as an endless sailing mode where you just build your own custom ba uh, boat and like a creative mode and you just sail around, that shit is mm. actually really fun. Even without like any. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I mean... No goals. I mean, it's not as fun as, you know, the game can be minus the combat, but it is fun to sail yeah. around on a boat. The game is okay, at its okay. best when it's a game about sailing around and exploring things, which is why I'm I mean, like, I can almost recommend this to certain people, but ultimately, if you want to sit down and play and complete this game, I don't recommend it to most It's like, it's one of the games on Steam that deserves the mixed tag. You could, <laughs> yeah. You could, you could like this game. You could hate this game, and I think I it's seems... really going to depend on how you enjoy games. It's very weird that they decide to add a boss at the end of each chapter. Like I would have added something else, considering like what else you do in the it's game. It's such a shame because I love games. I love Raft. I love games yeah. like Sea of Thieves. I love games where you're just sailing around. And this is this starts off like a really relaxing like survival crafting sailing game, but it just turns into this horrible. Co terrible combat simulator with frustrating mechanics and I all they needed to do was they needed to instead of making a specific game mode where you just sail around doing nothing how about you just make a game mode with lighter combat or, or like just, to have a boss at the end like it just or more just give you the ability to skip the bosses if you want to yeah I think that would have made this would make this game more accessible and a lot more enjoyable for a lot more people. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's my thoughts on Windbound. Like, Black and Melee, hundred percent recommend. And then Windbound is like a, is like a. It's if you like what you see and you think you can get around these awful clunky combat mechanics, then maybe. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. Even though there's just so much what feels like wasted potential with such a great base of a game. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's the intent to drink. Bye. It looks interesting, but yeah. Bye. Bye.